Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and this is going to be my January half wrap up. And I had planned to read books off my physical TBR, especially ones that I had bought new this month. And I'm happy to report that all of these uh, are from my own TBR and all but one of them are ones that I bought new. So I'm really happy with that. I also read a couple of books from the library, an audiobook, and one that had to go back. So let's start with those so I don't forget them. Um, first, Bitter by Quigga Meze. This is a prequel to Pet, which was a uh, very big um, popular book of theirs set in kind of a utopia sort of society where they feel like all the bad guys are gone, but it turns out that there may still be some bad guys and there's like a magical monster that comes out of a painting um, of Pet's mother and so this book centers on Pet's mother before um, when the world was really bad um, and the revolution hadn't taken over yet um, and she is a painter and it involves what happens when monsters come out of her paintings for the first time. The main character Bitter is bisexual, her love interest is bisexual, um, her best friend is a lesbian. It talks a lot about protests and revolution and being the artists who inspire the people who are on the front lines and being healers of the people on the front lines versus those people who are like protesting and getting hurt by the police and there is a discussion about um, violent revolution versus nonviolent revolution because the monsters that come out of the paintings want a violent revolution um, and have the power to make that happen. It's very different from Pet and yet I would say if you want to read more books or are interested in books about that discussion or about um, protests and like being on the front lines versus not being on the front lines um, this would be a good book for you and I gave Bitter five stars then we have The Fastest Way to Fall um, which I remembered from the plus size readathon that was several months ago um, when I found it on my um, Libraries Libby as an audiobook and this is about a mixed race fat woman who um, is a uh, assistant of a online magazine type thing. She wants to get a writing post and so with another woman of color who's in the same sort of position as her wanting to get um, is an assistant and wants to be a writer um, she starts this series of posts for the magazine um, about using two fitness type apps um, with slightly different focuses. One is called Hot Are You and one is called Fit Me. Um, so one is more based on how you look and one is more based on like feeling strong in your body and stuff like that. And um, it is about her falling in love with her coach that she uh, meets on this app. And I thought it was a little bit manufactured drama with both characters kind of being immature for their you know being in their late 20s early 30s it's one of those things where it's I personally as an ace person think it's not that hard to not have sex with someone until your professional relationship is at an end I just think it's not that big of a deal but for the characters in this book it was a big deal and so they didn't and that created trouble with their jobs. Who would have guessed? So that was kind of frustrating um, and also they were both keeping secrets from each other but all the stuff it had to say about fitness and eating what makes you feel good in your body and exercising in a way that makes you feel good in your body um, like makes your muscles happy and makes your intestines happy and stuff like that. Um, I really liked everything it had to say about that. It also touched on um, unhealthy diets and how those can lead you to faint or worse. Kind of liked everything outside of the romance better than the actual romance itself. Yeah, it kind of bothers me when characters make very obviously bad decisions 
and cause entirely cause cause all of the problems that happen to them like i prefer there to be an outward force that is causing the problems for the characters so yeah i think i gave that one three stars then we have fire becomes her by rosie thor this is about a world where this stuff called flare powers everything um it's like the electricity of the world while also being the magic of the world so like everything is powered by magic and all of the magic comes from flare <sighs> they don't have electricity or anything to like supplement that um and the flare is all owned by the rich people who own the mines for the flare and the processing plants for the flare and the poor people don't have any flare therefore they don't have any electricity to heat their homes and such and so forth this has a little bit of a 20s type vibe because it has speakeasies where they have fake flair in their alcohol um, and the kind of the way people dress and kind of the, I guess this happens all the time, but the must have sparkles, must have shiny things um, of the rich is a very big part of this. Flair also makes things sparkle and glow and stuff and the rich will throw it around to make their spaces decorated and like put it on their faces and their dresses to make themselves prettier. Um, so it feels kind of like 20s ostentatiousness. I think it's supposed to be kind of based on that and it is about a young girl who came from poverty, got a scholarship to a fancy school, targeted a young man to get him to fall in love with her who is a powerful son of a senator gets him to get her on his father's uh campaign team is treated terribly and so um when someone offers to have her switch sides and work for the other campaign who's all about um redistribution of wealth versus the campaign she's on is all about trickle down economic she sees an opportunity and uh yeah i didn't like this as much as i wanted to because i i like likable characters and the main character is not a good person until like 200 pages in like she's very selfish yeah that's basically the crux of it she's very selfish her background kind of explains why she is that way she's never had anything and so now she has more than she did because she's attached to these rich people and she um is desperate for more and more and more um but like there are lots of poor people who still care about other poor people so you can't entirely <sighs> shift the blame onto that but I did like her redemption arc and I really liked the side characters um they were really cool the person who recruited her for this other campaign is non-binary um and talks about having top surgery they talk about pronouns and are all very um not weird about that she has a best friend who is aromantic and um the non-binary person is also uh, asexual and she kind of has her own thing where she's trying to figure out what her romantic and sexual orientations are not exactly in that way but she's struggling with it and she feels like the weight of other people's expectations because this is a fairly uh allonormative world so it's partially about that but there was also a lot where it was very obvious to me that her relationship with the boy she had targeted at the beginning was very obviously over and she was like no i haven't officially broken up with him no girl the thing you did <laughs> means you're broken up and the action scene of which there's pretty much just one or two um i felt like rosie thor is not that much of an action scene writer much better with other elements but I really liked a lot of the conversations that were had about sexuality and romantic feelings and what the nature of love is and how it's different for all your different relationships and um, about how voting isn't the only way to make change and waiting for every four years to come around um, is too long for the people who are currently suffering. Um, so I really liked all those conversations. So overall, I gave Fire Becomes Her four stars. I 
also read A Dragon Bird in the Fern by Laura Rukert. This is about a world where when someone is murdered, their ghost comes back and starts haunting their family members and will eventually be violent towards them and eventually even kill them if the murderer isn't found and put to justice. So this is about a princess whose sister has been murdered um, and is starting to be a little violent, um, trying to solve her sister's murder by marrying the person her sister was supposed to marry, who is a foreign king, because it is believed that the murderer came from this foreign king's country, so if she goes with him there and has some power there as his queen, she will be able to investigate and find the murderer before her sister's ghost murders her whole family. So I was drawn right in right away by the romance and the promise of the romance because I really liked the way that the um, heroine and the hero interacted even though they don't know each other's language yet. Um, and I really like the journey of her learning the language. The main character also has dyslexia, so it's particularly difficult, especially when people are trying to teach her based on how things are spelled um, and on the writing system instead of just orally teaching her. And so I really liked seeing how different forms of teaching the language work better for her. Um, my dad has dyslexia, so it's nice to see that in a book. And I really liked a lot of the side characters that she met in this other country. Um, she has a lady guard, particularly, who's a favorite of mine. Um, I guess the villain fairly early on, but that didn't bother me. I kind of like being able to do that. And her getting to know her hero, um, even though they had trouble communicating um, and them figuring out how to communicate even without a common language was really um, fun to see and I really enjoyed the growth of that relationship. And I like to see her um, learning how to be queen of another country and like basically being kind to people and being accepting of their different culture and like wanting to acclimatize herself to that. Um, so yeah, I gave Dragon Bird in the Fern five stars. Um, I also read some of these books for the Short Stack Readathon, which I'll link below. Um, this one is a novella, The Past is Red, by Catherine Valente. <sighs> this is a weird little book. <laughs> it, the first half of it is a short story that was part of a collection of post-apocalyptic stories, and then Valente added uh, a second half to explore more things and like continue the story of Tetley. It is a world where the ocean has covered the whole world, there's no more land, and everybody lives on floating piles of trash or the occasional boat or uh, raft. Most of the rest of the people on the trash islands want to find land um, so they can live as regular humans again, but Tetley is like, what's wrong with trash land? Trash land is great. We have enough food for everybody. We have homes to live in made out of trash. Why do we need land? And this attitude, among other things, makes her very unpopular. It was kind of hard to read because of all the bad things that were happening to Tetley, but it was also not as bad as it could have been because Tetley has an, uh, oh, there's a word for this, indomitable optimism that is really cool to see. And so I ended up enjoying it quite a bit, um, even though the circumstances that everyone is in are quite depressing. So I gave The Past is Red four stars. Then uh, one of the other prompts for Short Stack is to read a poetry collection. And this, uh, No Parole Today by Laura Tohe, is part poetry collection, part prose. So like one page will be poetry, the other page will be prose. Um, and it is a lot about her experiences at uh, boarding school. I am not sure what years she was in boarding school. She's Dine, and so it's a combination of boarding school and whenever she's home on the reservation. It's not as dark as some memoirs set at these boarding schools but it does address um, how terrible they were. And yeah, both the prose and the poetry were really evocative and had a really nice flow to them. 
so I gave no parole today five stars then we have Mechanica which was gifted to me from care of wild book garden and I really love this um, it is a Cinderella story but where she saves herself by being an inventor she makes um, a Tom automata out of gears and uh, metal and glass that run off of little coal furnaces and it's a little bit magical it's fairly fairly magical but also fairly um, technical so it's a combining of technology and magic and I really love the friends that she makes and my battery is flashing so I'm gonna do this a little fast she has this wonderful little metal horse that becomes her friend that who is invented by her mother and she really connects to her mother through her inventing and of course there's a prince and a ball and I really love the ending it was really cool <laughs> Um, and there's a lot about love and friendship in here, and those are all really precious. Oh, there's a second book, so I'm going to be looking forward to that as well. So, uh, if you'd like to leave an emoji, how about a slipper? Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to know how the first half of January has gone for you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!